So, welcome back to the second part of this where we're going to look at situational factor number two, collective and crowd behaviour. So I've got a couple of links. Now these links up on the screen, actually the second one doesn't match with the video I'm going to show you, but I'm just going to show you a couple of examples of the kind of thing that we're talking about so that you have got something to kind of link it with in your memory. So the first one that I'm going to show you is just a, an old clip of footage. Just a couple of minutes into the game, it became clear something was wrong behind the Liverpool goal. It seems initially police thought it was a pitch invasion. But soon people were collapsing on both sides of the fence. At six minutes past three, police ordered the players off the pitch but it still seemed they hadn't grasped the scale of the tragedy unfolding before their eyes. It wasn't until 12 minutes past three that the first medic, a St John's ambulance volunteer, climbed over the fence onto the terrace. By then, people had already died or were dying. At the back and front of the pen, supporters were trampled in the desperation. Others tried to get out however they could. Then, at 16 minutes past three, the first ambulance arrived pitch side. But that was already too late for 96 fans. So that is the first video. Here's the second. As we're watching this, I just want you to be thinking, what is it that you think causes these events and this kind of behavior, which is so out of the ordinary? Blazes burning in Croydon in South London after a furniture store was set alight. The latest violence began this afternoon in Hackney in East London when police were attacked with rocks and missiles. It soon spread south to Lewisham and Peckham where shops and cars were set on fire. And this was the scene in Birmingham tonight as the violence spread outside the capital for the first time since the trouble erupted on Saturday. So what are your thoughts? What do you think causes people to, in the broad light of day, go and set buildings on fire and smash windows and riot and destroy things? And what causes people to crush themselves into a tiny area of a football stadium to the point where they have to spill out onto the pitch, they're trying to climb out and people are, are trampled to death? what is actually going on there what explains that kind of behavior just spend a minute to reflect do you have any theories what's your what's your impression i think it's important to reflect and to acknowledge that actually everyone has their own ideas of why these things happen even without learning any psychology at all everybody has a kind of a theory something that they believe and a way that they explain these events but as you're here and you're studying psychology that's not enough we need to be a little bit more scientific and methodical about this so what we're going to talk about is the perspectives on collective and crowd behavior the ideas which have uh, done the best job at explaining these things so far. Now this is an old area of psychology. Crowd behaviour is a phenomenon that's been studied for over a hundred years. As you can see here, Gustave Le Bon, back in 1896, he, he wrote a book and in there described this kind of crowd mentality and the instinct that seemed to take over. And then Obviously, many years later, other psychologists have built from that, um, being perhaps a little bit more scientific or methodical about it. What we're going to do is I want you to do your Super 6. So for those of you in the UK, you might get this reference, but the Super 6 is just a technique that I use in class to help people to condense um, quantitative information into kind of memorable points. So what I want you to do is have a look at the paragraph that's up on the board. This describes what Le Bon said in his 1896 book about the crowd. And obviously there's too much there to remember. So what I want you to do is to try and read through and pick out the six key words 
that you feel are, um, are essential and really capture the essence of what he was trying to say. Now, those six words don't need to follow on. It doesn't need to be grammatically correct or a sentence. Just the, the six words which are the most important. One thing you might want to think about is if someone were to ask me to explain collective and crowd behaviour, which words would I need to go to? Which would I need to use? Um, if I was going to be able to explain this to them. So pause the video, have a read through the paragraph, pick your Super 6. Same thing again, this is a description of what Riker said back in the 80s and how he kind of built on the ideas that Le Bon had proposed. This is more into the realms of modern psychology. Okay, once you've done your super six of Riker's first theory, which he proposed in 1984, I want you to do the same thing, but with his second theory, which he proposed in 1996. Now you've got those, you should have three sets of those six words, which try and capture the essence of what the perspectives on crowd behavior say. Now, just to check your understanding, make sure that that's kind of gone in. I've got a few summary questions here for you. So again, pause the video, have a go at those. If you're not sure about these events, um, the Yellow Jacket riots, you may or may not have come across, just have a quick search of them online. Um, but the picture on the bottom left is a picture from the Yellow Jacket riots in Paris, which spanned 2018 to 2019. What I want you to pay particular attention to is of all the vehicles you can see, which vehicle is it that's completely destroyed and, and why do you think that might be? Okay, so hopefully you are starting to feel fairly confident in some of the ideas that are contained within these perspectives and, and within social influence. Really to, to kind of wrap this up, there's one word which is probably the most important and sums it all up. And that word is de-individuation. Just take a minute, pause the video. Just from what the word looks like, from what it sounds like, what do you think that might actually be describing? So hopefully you have an idea already. But I'm going to go through some of the detail a little bit more clearly. These are kind of points that you'd find on a mark scheme. Um, for a question about de-individuation. The key point really is that in crowd situations where there are hundreds of people present, people experience a loss of individual accountability. What that means is that they stop thinking and feeling and even acting as an individual. Because they are part of such a huge crowd, they feel that they become anonymous. No one can individually recognize them. No one could single them out and blame them. And so it frees them to behave in a way that they wouldn't ever normally because they would be afraid of the consequences. It also results in a loss of the higher moral reasoning. The foundations of most people's morality are based on what is and is not accepted by society, which actions will they be punished for, which actions are they rewarded and respected for. Now in a crowd situation, particularly a crowd situation where people are unrecognisable, they're perhaps all wearing the same type of clothing or their faces are covered, that removes that moral foundation. And so only people with a very good level of moral development, which we'll talk about later on in this topic, are able to continue to, to really regulate the behavior and act in a responsible way. Most people, when freed from that social expectation, um, behave in a way that, that you wouldn't expect. One of the videos that we watched earlier was of the Hillsborough disaster. 96 people were, were killed because a, because a crowd all crushed into the center pens of a football match and no one who was there would count themselves as a murderer. And yet collectively, they killed nearly 100 people. 
but it's because none of them were thinking as an individual. They weren't thinking, oh, I am the problem here. I am contributing to this problem. Everyone viewed themselves as just kind of a victim of this of this entity, which was the crowd, which had kind of almost taken on its own life, separate from all the individuals in it. All these things, the loss of moral reasoning, no fear of consequences, loss of individual accountability, they, they are caused by that feeling of anonymity, of being anonymous in a crowd. You can't be identified. And so because of that, although it doesn't always happen, it, it very frequently leads towards violence and antisocial behaviour because people can they finally feel free to get away with doing those things that they normally wouldn't be allowed to or, or wouldn't be able to. Your final task on this, just really to, to sum up what you've learned, and, and I hope that this kind of makes sense, is that I, I want you to actually write a kind of article, some sort of online post, which explains the theory behind crowd behaviour, but I want you to try and word it in a way that a non-psychologist would understand it. So if you use that specific psychological vocabulary, which you should be doing, you need to also give a definition of it and explain it in terms that anybody could understand. To use as your example, um, I've given you a few suggestions here. One more which might be particularly interesting um, if you're doing this soon after the video is uploaded is obviously where we're all in lockdown because of coronavirus. And as a psychologist, I found the early stages of this really fascinating to watch people's behaviour. For example, we saw on the news that other countries were starting to go into lockdown and that, that this disease had a potential to become pandemic. And within a couple of days, all the toilet roll disappeared from all of the supermarkets. And that is a weird thing. That's an example of crowd behavior. Although people weren't acting as a crowd physically, mentally, they had become a crowd. They were acting under this common purpose and panicking. And actually people stopped thinking rationally and reasonably. I'm just gonna add this here for you. Okay, there you go, have a go at that. Just finally, as we wrap up the video then, bear in mind as you're writing this post, you wanna be talking about the phenomenon that were explained when I asked you to do that super six activity. So you wanna be talking about things like common social identity, in-group, out-group, and what factors can cause people to assume a common social identity, even if they didn't have one before, you may also want to talk about acting under fear or instinct, like Le Bon mentioned in his work. Okay, that's it for this video, where we've talked about situational factor number two, collective and crowd behaviour. Next time, we're going to look at the third factor, which is culture.